You may be asking yourself, what is a target product profile? Why do I need one? And how do I create one? A target product profile, or TPP, is a tool that concisely captures the key attributes of your product. A TPP will allow you to design an effective and efficient research plan in order to reach your end goal of bringing a therapeutic product to the clinic. It will assist your team in establishing a shared vision and is vital to team collaboration. It should be used to create a development strategy and is informed by experts in the clinical, regulatory, and investment sectors. Keep in mind your TPP should be developed early and revised regularly as the project progresses. Ultimately, it will guide your go-no-go -no -go decisions throughout the project. In addition to these benefits, your target product profile will also serve as a basis for beginning a dialogue with the Federal Drug Administration, a unique stakeholder in the therapy development process. As you know, the FDA regulates therapeutics entering clinical trials as well as products being launched for sale. Unlike some of your other stakeholders, the FDA is not concerned about the number of patients with the disease, the costs involved, or the other products that are already on the market. The FDA is only concerned about quality, safety, efficacy, and the benefit-risk analysis. Developing your TPP will help you to address these concerns. If you are an academic, it is important to note that you should consult with your university research units and experts before contacting the FDA directly. Your university may have a program similar to the Michigan Institute for Clinical and Health Research, or MISHAR, the IND-IDE Investigator Assistance Program, also known as MIAP. This program helps investigators determine their regulatory pathway and assists with FDA meetings, preparation, and reports. If you are not affiliated with a university, consider contacting an attorney or consultant for these services. With that all in mind, let's dive in. How do you create a preliminary target product profile? For the purposes of our preliminary TPP, there are seven key sections to address indications and usage, dosage and administration, contraindications, adverse reactions, clinical pharmacology, non-clinical toxicology, and clinical studies. These align with the FDA's drug labeling sections. As we examine each section, we will share some helpful hints for those in the very early stages of research, as well as some opportunities for customer discovery for those who are planning or actively going through that process. The first section to address is indications and usage. In this section, you must consider what disease or condition does your therapy target? Be as specific as possible here. What is the exact condition? For example, rather than an indication of cancer or lung cancer, you may say non-small cell lung cancer that is PD-L1 positive. Who are the target patients? Based on the previous example, your target patients may be patients with locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer and PD-L1 expression greater than 1%. It is important to also consider here what the largest market may be compared to the easiest regulatory path. For example, you may be able to develop a therapy through the orphan disease program rather than through a more laborious regulatory path. What is the clinical context of treatment? Is your therapy for treatment or prevention? Is it a first, second, or third line treatment? Would or should it be used in conjunction with other therapies? Your answers to each of these questions should be used when developing your future research plan. Additionally, this section includes several opportunities for customer discovery. In your interviews with non-FDA stakeholders, seek to understand the shortcomings of current clinical solutions. Be sure to confirm industry and investor interest in the potential therapeutic. How difficult might it be to recruit study participants for the type of research you need to conduct? Next, examine the dosage and administration. How much therapy will be required to be effective? Is it administered by oral means, IV, or another route? What is the dosing interval? 
and what is the duration of the treatment? Be sure your answers to these questions are supported by your preclinical data. Just like the previous section, this section includes several opportunities for customer discovery. Ask your stakeholders, most likely clinicians, is this likely to be palatable for patients? Is this dosing interval or method of administration a competitive advantage over what is available currently? Under contraindications, you must ask yourself, when should this therapy never be used? Is there a specific patient population that should never use it, such as women of childbearing age and teratogens? What about comorbidities like hemophilia and anticoagulants, or use with other treatments like immunotherapy and steroids? If you are in the early stages of your research, you may not yet have this information. For now, think about your therapy's mechanism of action or drug class. Do either suggest potential contraindications? Include these in your preliminary TPP. Design your research plan to address these questions and revise your TPP as new information comes to light. Now let's take a look at adverse reactions. These may include skin conditions or gastrointestinal effects, for example. Are you expecting a better safety profile than other drugs in the same class? What have you already observed in clinical studies, if anything? As in previous sections, if you do not yet know this information, look to the drug class for potential or common adverse reactions within the class. Be sure to ask your stakeholders whether there may be adverse reactions that would be tolerated by the patient population. Does your side effect profile offer a competitive advantage? In the clinical pharmacology section, ask yourself, what is your drug's mechanism of action and biochemical and physiological effects on the body? How fast does the therapy reach the target organ? How is your therapy absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and excreted? What is the bioavailability? How long does it persist? And how is the therapy cleared from the body? Next is non-clinical toxicology. Here, consider what is the safety profile on cells, tissues, and organ systems assessed through in vitro and in vivo animal studies? What is the maximum tolerated dose in animals? How do you predict a safe starting dose in humans? And what are the effects of long-term exposure to your therapy? If you are unsure of these answers at this time, ask yourself, what toxicity can I expect based on the mechanism of action? Include this in your preliminary target product profile and design your research plan to address these questions. As new information becomes available, revise your TPP. The final section to include in your preliminary target product profile is clinical studies. What is the clinical evidence you will need to prove your hypothesis? For example, are long-term survival studies needed? It is recommended that you consider precedence when developing your response to this section. During customer discovery, you will want to ask your stakeholders what features and endpoints are important to them and what evidence is needed to gain market advantage and clinical adoption. Now that we've walked through all seven sections, it's your turn to create your preliminary TPP. Looking for more detailed guidance? View the FDA's Guidance for Industry and Review Staff Target Product Profile, a strategic development process tool linked with this video. It provides useful guidance for components within each section and includes additional sections per drug labeling. Once you've completed your preliminary TPP, it's time to test your assumptions through customer discovery and translational research. Remember, the target product profile is an ever-evolving document and should be updated each time new information comes to light. For more information, contact Fast Forward Medical Innovation.